Let me uh, begin this afternoon by asking, uh, taking a poll maybe. Uh, how many of you, or if you, you don't want to, well, let's just, if I, if I could take a poll, I wonder how many of you uh, take, read, see a newspaper every day, not just in passing or, or what have you. Uh, those things are getting to be old and, and uh, passe, I guess, if you will, and uh, not many people read them anymore. Uh, in fact, I think I've read in, in the News Sentinel, our local paper, obviously, that they're having a little bit of a hard time keeping up uh, uh, circulation and and uh, so forth, and they're resorting to a lot of different uh, tactics in order to try to maintain their their uh, the money flow and and this sort of thing, and that's probably happening everywhere. So I'd be surprised if very many of you um, uh, were subscribers to a uh, newspaper. I generally read at least one, maybe two, sometimes. I look at three in a day's time. I've always told my my children, preach to them, I guess. My son would say, I preach to him about uh, reading a newspaper and looking at one. He doesn't have any use for them. And uh, uh, so, um, to that end, <clears throat> I uh, picked up the paper a couple of days ago and I read the comics also. In fact, that may be the best part of the paper. I don't know. Sometimes it seems that, that that's the way it is. But um, I read the comics in the newspaper. There's one in particular that you may or may not know about, and it's called Snuffy Smith. Uh, been in the paper forever, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but had a... Um, had a um, uh, two or three frames as they do, uh, and the doc, doctor, the old doc in the in the uh, cartoon, uh, was asking the Parsons, the local preacher that they that they continually run stories about, um, uh, how he prepares his sermons how he prepares his sermons. And I thought that was kind of a, uh, since I'm here today, uh, an interesting uh, uh, question and whatever. And the parson says, it's easy. It's easy. First, he says, he prepares a good start to his sermon. And then he prepares a good finish. And he says what to the doc, he says, whatever you do, he says, keep them close together. The beginning, the start, and the finish. And I thought that was a pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, thing uh, uh, to remember, to think about. So we may keep it uh, pretty close today. I rather think we probably will, but uh, anyway, and I know that uh, in the past I've talked to various preachers about about uh, going on and on and on and, and uh, never seeming to stop. And, and of course, you notice that when we talk about um, um, service times, we talk about times to start. For some reason, I've never seen one that says we stop at this particular time either. We generally suppose they're an hour, but they may be uh, a whole lot longer than I, I have seen my elderly mother stop and uh, discuss that with a with a preacher or two about how he went over and went too long and and he needed to change his ways or what have you. So we'll uh, <laughs> we'll see about that this afternoon. Um, that being said, I want to talk about uh, Saul. A little bit about Saul. Not Saul in the New Testament, but Saul in the Old Testament. King Saul. 
and uh, his some of his problems that he developed after he had uh, after he had been anointed and after he he um, uh, became uh, king um, and in and in particular in uh, first Sam on uh, yeah first Samuel the 15th uh, chapter if you'd like to look at that and read it and we won't read the whole thing um, because for the sake of time uh, I don't want to be, want to be careful not to go over uh, not too much of a problem or potential problem but anyway um, uh, there was a time and I'll paraphrase and talk about it I guess at the moment that uh, uh, God came to Samuel, Samuel his prophet and he told him uh, you go and tell Saul that I've got a job for him to do I want him to go down to the uh, Amalekites Amalekites uh, and I want them to utterly destroy everything that's there. You remember he told him he wanted to destroy the people from A to Z, their herds, their animals, everything that belonged to them, and uh, in, and the, uh, well, I don't think he expressly uh, pointed out the, the uh, uh, the king, but he didn't want. He wanted everything destroyed, utterly destroyed, is the way the scripture talks about it. Utterly destroyed. We understand that to mean totally, not a shred, nothing left. And that was was Saul's. Uh, um, that was his job that God gave him through Samuel, and Samuel delivered that to him and told him uh, to do just that. And uh, the first thing that Saul did was he set about numbering his soldiers to see how many he had. And I suppose that, that um, one ought to first, before they go into battle, count their resources in some way at least. They do today, I'm sure of that. But on the other hand, when one thinks about it, God was on Saul's side, wasn't he? It was God that told him to do that. And with God with you on your side, if he be for you, who can be against you? And so you might say that if, you ever, if you've ever played Rook, that uh, Saul had, the, uh, he had the, the, the big trump card, didn't he? He didn't, didn't have a color but he had uh, the rook itself. And so whatever he did, he was bound to succeed and, and uh, be successful. Uh, we see that uh, Saul was given the job to do, and his job was to punish Amalek. And why? Because God remembered that that the king had stood in his way, in the way, I'm sorry, in the way of Israel as they were coming through to the promised land. And as a result, they had to deviate and they had to go around that particular group of people, the Amalekites, uh, uh, for whatever reason, not being willing to fight them at that uh, particular juncture. God remembered, as God always remembers, and uh, so time had come to punish uh, Amalek, the king. So um, he, um, uh, he, he had thwarted Israel and, and God didn't appreciate it and it was his time to take retribution on him. And he told him, as we've said, don't spare anything. If you look at the 15th, chapter of uh, 1 Samuel in the third verse and that's exactly what God said don't spare anything that was his instructions uh, that he that he gave and so Saul set out and as we as we pointed out the first thing that he did was to enumerate his people and see how many horsemen and how many uh, men he had he's the fourth verse says 
that he had 200,000 foot soldiers, 10,000 men of, uh, of Judah. I'm not sure what the 10,000 men of Judah was, but he had a lot of folks that he depended on Saul to, um, uh, to accomplish this task. Now God didn't ask him how many people he had, you'll notice. He didn't, he didn't check that out before he told Saul to do the thing that, do the deed of, of utterly destroying those, um, those Amalekites. Um, you know, and, and I'm, uh, I'm also reminded as an aside, uh, and we talked about this just a little bit this morning, I think, uh, in our in our class, perhaps, or I thought about it at least, that um, Saul did the thing that he wanted to do. Um, the denominational world does the thing that they want to do. Um, if that matches what God wants then that's all the better. But if it doesn't, well, that's too bad. Uh, we're going to do it my way anyway, for whatever reason. And I, I thought of a, a story that has been told to me uh, about a man who was given three houses to build. And I wish I had a board to kind of illustrate this, but you see if I can draw it in your mind. He had plans for three houses, and uh, the master told him to go and build these according to the plans. He uh, took the plans, and he did so. He built two of them, and they were exa exactly like the plans called for. No changes, no deviation. The third house, he decided that it would work better and be better if it had a garage attached to it. And so he attached it, came back and told the master he had completed the job. He had done exactly what he was, uh, what he was told to do. Two of them, as I say, were built exactly according to the plans, and the third one was except it had some change to it. We would think that the change was probably for the better. I gather, I would say, uh, in the, in our society, that the uh, garage would be would be better. Now, and that was the man's explanation that I made it a little bit better than what your plan called for. The question is, did the builder follow? any of the plans most most people would say yes he followed two of the plans but not the third one would not give him credit for the third one i would say he followed two but he only followed them why because he agreed with them he agreed with them. He agreed with the plans of the first two that they were right and that's the way it ought to be built. He came to the third. He said, no, that's not right. Needs to be different like this. And I thought about that. Um, and we'll see as we continue on in this lesson with Saul that that seems to be exactly the thing that he did. He followed God's plan four ways so far but then didn't complete and and go all the way like God said and it strikes me that the denominational world when you think about this does the same thing baptism that, that Charles talked about this morning it's okay we'll accept that but it's not necessary you see and, and so many other things that the world has concocted. It's not God's idea, it's their idea. And they want to, 
to uh, uh, to do this thing of obedience and and uh, worship and and so forth their way not God's way when what this builder wanted I mean or what this the man that had the builder to working what he wanted was was the builder to build it his way his way not uh, not making any changes alone and that's what God expects out of us doesn't he he expects us to have uh, or to to build and to conduct our lives in the way that he has uh, directed and not the way that we would decide to go and so getting back to Saul you know, Saul decides to do his thing he decides to as he thinks or thought at the time probably to uh, to um, Excuse me to conduct this operation in the way that it was best rather than uh, rather than the way God had told him to do so so he first is uh, he set out and he numbered his own people and he was looking undoubtedly for his own power to see how much he power he had and that to be certain that he was able to uh, defeat the Amalekites didn't count God didn't count on God but he counted on his own people and so therefore he numbered them he neglected God in his calculation I'm sure I believe he did he uh, neglected them and uh, went about doing his own thing Saul defeated the Amalekites. Do you think it was his 200,000 men that did that? Well, he could have been. But certainly we know that he had had God on his, uh, on his side. On his side. Uh, so he was successful in his, in his uh, dealings. He, he captured Agag. The, uh, the king, um, Saul, and the people, we find later, spared Agag and, uh, and the best of the animals and the best of the things that were there. And they brought them back. And certainly they wouldn't want the old and the decrepit and, and uh, so forth uh, that, uh, that was there. Uh, <clears throat> Saul later was held responsible and also he was held accountable. God spoke to, to um, Samuel and he told him he was really put out, we might say, with, uh, with Saul. And he was sorry that he made him king because he did not follow his instructions. God knew that. Samuel didn't. God spoke to Samuel and told him what the story was, what had gone on, and Samuel was distressed over it. He had a lot of hope for Saul, didn't he? He didn't want to anoint him in the beginning. He didn't want uh, to place a king over Israel because he had already known what would uh, what would happen. So, he, but he spoke to. Uh, uh, to Samuel and told him and as I say Samuel was distraught uh, he sent Samuel to um, uh, to see Saul Saul said when he saw him coming I have carried out your instructions the the commands of the Lord In the 13th verse he uh, accepted the uh, uh, the accolades, if you will, uh, for uh, winning the battle, for being successful, and for doing what what God had uh, had told him 
to uh, do. I have carried out the commands of the Lord. Oh, Samuel said, what is the sounds I hear? What is the lowing of the of the uh, animals and the bleeding the sheep and and so forth? And we see that in the in the fourteenth fourteenth uh, uh, verse. It's, what is the bleeding of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? Remember, he was told to utterly destroy, utterly destroy. And, and Saul had an answer, didn't he? Saul said, somebody else took care of this. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, we see it all the time, and we might have used that, that excuse from time to time in our lives too. That I was told and I was advised this, that, and the other. Uh, so uh, Saul was just like us in a lot of ways. He... Uh, he uh, uh, wanted to to accept the the responsibility for the good things, but he didn't want to accept the, the responsibility and the accountability for the failure of doing what he had been uh, um, um, what he had been charged with doing. God said to Samuel in the twenty second verse of that. Uh, of that same chapter. He said, Has the Lord as much delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. Uh, he had told Samuel that he was going, that they, he and the people had saved um, um, the best of the lot, of course, including the king. But his his intent was to sacrifice to God for the victory that he uh, that he had gained. And God, or God, through uh, through Samuel, tells him that to obey is better than to sacrifice. And that's a thing that we need to remember. God expects us to be obedient to him. He expects us to follow him. He expects us to do his will, not to come knowing that, that he will forgive us after we repent, but not to do that and expect to be forgiven for that action. He accepted and demanded in the, in the Old Testament much sacrifice from from many animals and and uh, various uh, kinds of offerings that the people uh, were required and did make some on their own did make for uh, for their sins and for their transgressions violations of the Old Testament law. Um, but that's not what he desired. He, he wanted them to, to obey him and therefore not have any sacrifices to make or any pleas for forgiveness uh, of those sins, but to, uh, uh, to be correct and to do things right in the beginning as he has as he has told us and so another thing that uh, kind of hit me and as i was thinking about these uh, these verses in this chapter is that several places saul refers to when talking to samuel the lord your god uh, he says the lord your god in uh, different places um in the 15th verse, he says, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and oxen to sacrifice to the Lord your God. And speaking to Samuel, as if, as if um, uh, Saul 
didn't have any part in Lot in this, and it wasn't wasn't Saul's uh, God. But he says to Samuel, the Lord your God, but the rest we have utterly destroyed. Well, God didn't say to destroy the the rest. He said to utterly destroy the whole thing. God took the kingdom from, from Saul because of this in the 26th verse. But Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you. He had been asked by Saul to go with him. Uh, in the previous verse, um, so that uh, he could uh, uh, impress the people and uh, so forth, that they were still together, and uh, Samuel and Saul. But Samuel said, said to Saul, I will not return with you, for you have received the word of the Lord, rejected the word of the Lord. The Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. As Samuel turned to go, Saul seized the edge of his note, of his robe, and it tore. So Samuel said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today and has given it to your neighbor who is better than you. And Samuel was hurt over that. He was hurt that Saul did not follow the word of the Lord. It bothered him badly. Uh, and he didn't want to believe it to uh, to begin with. But... At any rate, it uh, it happened that way, and uh, and uh, Saul no longer was king uh, after a time, and uh, of course David stepped in. The lesson for us, perhaps today, just think about this: that uh, we need to obey God, we need to listen to Him, and that we must listen to Him in all things and everything that that he says and everything he teaches us uh, don't attempt to insert our will in place of his just like the illustration i i uh, talked about with the, the man built the three houses actually uh, it was the builder's will to construct the houses it just so happened that the first two, the uh, the owner, the one that was having them built, um, he agreed, or the, his plans were acceptable and agreeable to the builder. And so he built them that way. But the third, for whatever reason, was not acceptable. And so he changed them. And uh, he put his own mark on them. But we need to remember that it's God's will, and it's God that we're trying to serve, and it's God that has the uh, the gift of eternal life. It's God that has all of the the blessings to give us, and He's the one that we ought to be out to to um, um, to please. Uh, truth of the matter is, in other cases, we understand that. The person that we're working for that that pays us our paycheck and our money we know that we need to please him or her as the case may be um, not someone third some third party or someone else but uh, uh, but that individual that writes the check and and pays us the sustenance that we that we need and we need to also understand that as surely as we don't or not obedient to God, as surely as that happens, that he will reject us, that, that he will take away from us the, uh, the hope that we have of eternal life, our part and lot in, uh, in, uh, in eternity. And there will be none for us if we if we reject him and if we don't uh, don't be obedient to him so we need to learn those things from uh, from Saul uh, his um, uh, uh, way that he 
did things or really the way that he did not do them as he was instructed to. I hope that's a closing and it's close enough to the uh, to the opening. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, the lesson is yours. We need to think about our own situation. We have the opportunity now to uh, uh, to help ourselves if we need help. Uh, if, if you're here and have have uh, not been obedient to God in some way, and we can help. Uh, today, now is the time to take care of that, and now is the the um, uh, the best time that we will ever have in our lives in order to be obedient to Him. If we can help you, come and let us know that as we stand and sing the song that Brother Keith has prepared for us.